Hi, I'm Dazza Greenwood of Civics.com and the MIT Media Lab. And this is a short video clip of MITRE Corporation's Justin Richer leading a webinar that we hosted last week talking about OpenID Connect and how you can use it to solve what he's calling the identity singularity. For more information on his talk, including his slides, and soon we'll be uploading video of the entire webinar, check out, oh, here it is. Yep, there's the URL, civics.com forward slash OpenID dash connect dash webinar. Thanks very much, and see you online. Um, works great if you have all of the tooling on all of the endpoints. Uh, somebody once described SAML to me as a sophisticated client sending a sophisticated message to a sophisticated server. And if you can afford the sophistication all the way through, SAML will get your job done. But um, adoption outside of the... Uh, the large-scale enterprise space has been pretty much non-existent um, because it's just vastly complicated. Now, the thing that's come up and kind of uh, stolen everybody's lunch out on the web is uh, this OAuth-style directed identity, wherein you know the endpoint that you're trying to log into, so, you know, log in with Facebook. You actually do an OAuth-style transaction, and we'll talk a bit about what that actually means, and that gives you a strong tie back to the identi identity provider directly. It's amazing how fast this took off. For, uh, for the years of OpenID 2.0 actually trying to get up there and get out onto lots of sites and really did see huge adoption, Facebook just and Twitter both just kind of showed up and be like, yeah, no, we're going to do it this way, and it worked really, really well. Um, so one of the things you'll see that we've done with OpenID Connect is really look at this and these other use cases and figure out why did this work? What was so good about this? Um, very quickly, want to buzz through PKI. It still doesn't work. We've been trying to make it work since the 60s. Um, CAC and uh, PIB is pretty much PKI, but now you have a, a wonky piece of hardware that you have to carry around in order to access the PKI. So it makes the PKI harder to use. Um, by the way, if anybody wants to make the argument for PKI to me, I, I encourage you to read the, uh, the paper, Why Johnny Can't Encrypt First. Um, and if you haven't, you really should. Um, browser ID is, yet again, PKI. Thank you, Mozilla. Um, um, they're getting, they're, they're actually doing some good stuff with this, um, uh, making the, uh, the bootstrapping process and the key exchange a little bit nicer, but I, I'm not personally seeing it going much of anywhere yet. And, of course, there are, um, the folks working on Skim, which is actually not an identity management system, really, it's a provisioning API. Mm -hmm. And so it's being sold a lot as a full identity stack, and it's not. It's, um, it's a really, really powerful RESTful identity provisioning and uh, management API. So it's, uh, it doesn't do authentication and authorization and all that other stuff that you'd want, but you can do some cool stuff. And of course, there's a mind-blowingly huge number of uh, proprietary solutions and various bits and pieces out there. Everybody thinks that um, they have a better way to implement it, so we're going to skip all that. So now on to the real meat of the presentation. And... That's identity, uh, Open ID Connect. Now, like I said, that bubble that we looked at before, that Venn bubble is collapsing in on itself. Uh, all, the, all the cases that we saw for the really high levels of assurance with SAML, people are figuring out ways to make that easier to use, easier to develop against, easier to implement. Open ID was looking at the, um, at the SAML use cases like, okay, so how can we actually keep some of the easy to deploy and implement stuff and bring that up to support higher levels of assurance. You know, what can we do in that direction? So everybody's kind of moving towards the center of this bubble, and a lot of the key players are actually working on OpenID Connect. Now, in a nutshell, it is an identity protocol for authentication and, to some extent, uh, authorization, profiles, and a few of the other things on that first list we looked at, built on top of OAuth 2. And OAuth 2 is a, uh, an authorization protocol uh, that's been developed at the IETF, um, and uh, by basing OpenID on top of OpenID Connect on top of OAuth 2, you can leverage all of the uh, security profiles, all of the working code, all of the stuff that's been built around OAuth 2, and you get an identity layer on top of it. In other words, what this is really about doing is codifying and standardizing that directed identity using OAuth as a transport and authorization layer that Facebook and Twitter actually made so popular. And I'm happy to say that Facebook is at least at the table with us um, trying to figure out what OpenID Connect 
should be going forward. Uh, how much they're at the table is a very loaded question. So, <laughs> um, it starts. So you start with uh, just basic OAuth two. Oh hey. Um, so you start with just very basic uh, OAuth two, and you add some other stuff that makes it work in a more dynamic world. So dynamic registration, um, session management, server discovery. All of these pieces are not inside of uh, OAuth. Um, OAuth just you know said. Very specifically, that's out of scope. Uh, but more importantly, this bit of profile information. So this is the structure of what uh, somebody's profile looks like. Because uh, people found that you didn't want to just figure out, oh, yes, somebody is authenticated over there. You wanted to know what their name was. Just, if for nothing else, so you could say, hi, Daza, welcome to the site. 